Hey folks, uh, it's a little easier driving than walking on the canal. And I'm driving to a special place and I have something very special in the back of my car. While I talk, see if you can guess what it is. The reason I'm making this video is uh, because the germ told me to. Not G-E-R-M, but the G-I-R-M, the General Instruction of the Roman Missal. Now that might sound exciting when you talk about missiles, but it's M-I-S-S-A-L. So it's actually more exciting. It has to do with the Mass, with the most important thing in our life. The Mass, M-I-S-S-A-L, kind of like a, a missile, it propels us forth because it fills us with the love, with the charity of Christ himself who sacrificed himself for us. Now, when we talk about the Mass, a lot of times we use the word liturgy. Liturgy simply means a work a work that God's people do, uh, enabled by and only by the power of God himself. So, Mass, Liturgy, what's this all about? Why do I have this thing in the back of my car? Well, today is Holy Thursday, and today begins the greatest liturgy of all the year. And today commemorates when Jesus himself made the Mass possible, when Jesus himself instituted the Eucharist. And so the germ, general instruction of the Roman Missal, tells us priests that we are supposed to make ridiculous videos explaining this. They, they left out the ridiculous videos part, but I knew what they meant. Anywho, um, today, Holy Thursday, this evening, we'll begin the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. And that is the first of three parts of one big liturgy that we call the Easter Triduum. Triduum, you can hear the word tri, like tricycle, it's three. So Holy Mass of the Lord's Supper commemorates that moment on Holy Thursday when Jesus took bread and took wine, and in place of the Lamb of the Passover Supper, he placed himself as the Lamb. Remember the Lamb that saved the Israelites from being killed uh, by the Egyptians or being killed by uh, by the Lord as he passed over. So Jesus made himself the lamb, and he took bread, and he took wine, and he said, this is my body. In that moment, God who had spoken and created something out of nothing, in that moment, he created, he made that bread into himself. He made that wine into himself. Now, of course, at the Passover supper that the Jewish people had celebrated up until that moment, and still separate, celebrate, you have to consume the lamb. Remember, if, if the Israelite people hadn't consumed the lamb, if they had just put the blood on their doorposts, well, according to Exodus, God would have struck them down. In order to be saved, we have to consume the lamb. So Jesus is that new lamb and he becomes the center of this new covenant. So he celebrates that and he literally gives us his heart. Every Eucharistic miracle, uh, there is heart tissue as they examine uh, what has taken on the appearance of flesh, uh, which we know always is Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity. In that moment also, besides changing the bread and wine, Jesus also substantially changed something, or I should say someone else, those 12 men around him, yes, including Judas Iscariot, he changed them into priests. He changed their souls and made it possible for them to celebrate. In that moment, he said, do this in memory of me. He made it possible for them to have the very power of God himself. So we celebrate the institution of the priesthood. And of course, we also celebrate fraternal charity, the self-giving love of Jesus, that he would kneel down, God himself would kneel down and scrub the dirty feet of sinners. So that's what we celebrate, and that's the beginning. Now at the end of the uh, Holy Thursday, we'll have a Eucharistic procession, again, to give love and honor to Jesus' gift of himself in the Eucharist. And then we will repose Jesus in our beautiful garden of repose uh, that Rita Tracy put together that is in Heart Greater Hall. And I invite you to come and just spend some time. Jesus said to his disciples on Holy Thursday evening, will you not keep watch with me for an hour? I invite you to come and spend some time in the Garden of Repose. Uh, just come into Heart Greater Hall uh, and Jesus will be there until midnight. Another thing that you can do is you can go, there'll be uh, a group of people going to different uh, 
different gardens of repose in different churches throughout the area. We've got a lot of beautiful ones. I mean, ours is the most beautiful, but there's a lot of other beautiful ones um, around. And so all that information's on Facebook and everything. And so that concludes, and we end that, um, we end the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper on Holy Thursday in silence because we're commemorating Jesus going into the garden and the fact that Jesus will soon be betrayed by his good friend. And then on Good Friday, yes, of course, we have the Stations of the Cross, which is very beautiful, and so many people have been showing up to that. I'm very grateful for that. But we also have Good Friday is the day in which we do not celebrate Mass. On Good Friday, uh, we celebrate the Passion of our Lord. We read the Passion. Uh, we're able to venerate the Cross. Now, unfortunately, this year we can't come up and kiss the Cross or touch the Cross, uh, but we can come and bow and adore the Cross, which saved us from our sins. And so we commemorate Jesus' incredible gift of love for us. And I know that, like me, you all are so moved when we read the Passion narrative. Um, and I know sometimes it's difficult for you to shout along with the crowd, crucify him. But in that moment, that's when we are recognizing the effects of our sins, that they nailed him to the cross, yet they don't fully overcome him. Jesus himself is stronger, is greater than sin. He's even stronger and greater than our own sin. And so that's Good Friday. Um, and so I invite you to that liturgy as well, or that part of the liturgy. And then finally, the big one, the Easter Vigil. If you've never been to an Easter Vigil, I wholeheartedly invite you. The Easter Vigil is the third part of the Triduum. And the Easter Vigil begins in a strange way. We begin with a blazing fire. And that blazing fire, it, uh, it represents the fire of Christ's charity, Christ's self-giving love. In the letter to the Hebrews, we hear that God is a consuming fire. You remember uh, Moses uh, on the mountain, there was fire and cloud and, uh, and, and earthquake. And so we encounter this consuming fire, and he does not want to destroy us, but he does want to draw us into himself. And then we light the Easter candle. That Easter candle, the Paschal candle, it represents Christ himself. And from that Easter candle, we all light our little candles, which represent our baptism. They are our sign that we are Christians like Christ. And we take on his light as we were baptized, as we receive Jesus in the Eucharist. We receive that divine charity living within us. And as long as we keep that divine charity glowing, as long as we don't let it get snuffed out by mortal sin, or if we reignite it through confession, well then, when we come to heaven, carrying those lights, just like um, the, the, the wise virgins in the gospel, well then the bridegroom will allow us to come into heaven. So, through the whole first part of the Easter vigil, well first, uh, we sing a song to a candle, which I always love. Um, I sing the Exultant, the, uh, this beautiful hymn filled, filled with symbolism about um, this light, which is the light of Christ, which is this pillar um, that represents that pillar that led the Israelites out of Egypt, uh, which represents a new day. And at the end of that, I say, may this light still be burning when the one morning star, that is Jesus himself, when the one morning star rises. And, uh, and then the whole first part, the liturgy of the word, is in dark and we have our candles because we are reading from the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, um, people were still in darkness. They hadn't received the light, the full light of Christ, but we see the hope, we see it. Um, and then of course, uh, when we do the Gloria, all the lights come on because Jesus has come, the Gloria, which is that song that the angels sang at the incarnation, uh, the birth of, of Jesus. And we launch into the epistle and then we sing that word that starts with A, A-L-L. -L. I'm not going to say it now because it's not Easter yet. We sing that, we proclaim it, and it's so glorious. And we get the gospel, the presence of Jesus in the scriptures. And uh, you'll hear a really, 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 really long homily. No, I'm just kidding. It'll be medium-sized. We have a homily, and then we, uh, we bless the baptismal water, the Easter um, baptismal water, so that you can take brand new holy water home with you. And we will confirm, tonight we will confirm two people, uh, two Catholics who uh, 
are excited to be confirmed as adults and to, to receive this gift of this sacrament and, uh, and continue persevering in their faith. And then the, the, the liturgy goes on, quote-unquote, as normal, but of course, you know, the liturgy is such an incredible gift, and uh, Holy Saturday is a beautiful time. And so we, once again, we celebrate Mass with all the bells and whistles and all the trappings and the incense and, and literally the bells, because the bells come back. They go silent on Holy Thursday after the Gloria, and then they, they come back. Again, it's a sign of rejoicing. We receive communion. We proclaim the fact that Christ is risen because in the Eucharist we receive not the dead Jesus, but the risen Jesus. This is the same Eucharist that the martyrs received and knew. If I receive him, if I receive the resurrected Lord, I cannot die. Yes, my body will die, but God will raise me up again and I will have life. So that is the Easter Trinity. After the uh, Holy Saturday, um, after the uh, the East the, uh, Mass in uh, the Easter Vigil, we will go and have a little bit of a reception just to celebrate. Um, especially Carla and Tony who are coming uh, or are receiving their uh, their confirmation. So that's the plan, and I hope that you'll join us for at least some of it. Now, you're saying, what am I doing with this chair in the back of my car? Well. You may notice this is the same chair that Father Gifford did his videos on. This is, yes, the ugly green chair. And today is a special day because it's Holy Thursday. It's a special day because it's April Fool's Day, but it's also a special day because it's Father Gifford's birthday. And what I have in the back besides this chair is a sign that says, it is your birthday. It's a statement of fact. And I am going to pull up to Father Gifford's house. I don't know if he's still sleeping or not. I kind of hope he is, because this should be a day where priests get rest and not do ridiculous things and wake up early in the morning. Anyway, I'm going to leave that chair on Father Gifford's driveway, and I am going to say, happy birthday. And that's gonna be his birthday surprise. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I will show you in just a bit the results of Father Gifford's birthday present, and we'll see if he comes out. I may not show you the video of him coming out, depending on how he's dressed. I know if somebody woke me up, and uh, then I probably wouldn't be in a good state to uh, for people to get a video of me. However, uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, thanks, guys. I'll be back soon. Okay, so we're pulling up to the rectory in Geneseo. This is going to be a lot of fun. All right, so I left the chair there and I called Father Gifford and we will see how he reacts. It's gonna be fun. One of the weirder messages I've received lately, but I'm sure I've received weirder in my lifetime, was telling me to record myself going out to my driveway. So, slightly confused.
That's so dumb.